Hi guys, <clears throat> it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous and I mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, here in the Finger Lakes of New York where we are, have stumbled into Friday, is it October 2nd or October 3rd? 2020. Who knows? It is a lovely fall of 2020 day. I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. This is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, and we need to head out and finish planting our organic field peas out there in the garden to uh, start shutting down the show here in New York before heading to Florida. But before we head out into the garden, doing what I do every Friday, and that is to bring you the my ecological meltdown roundup rant from the folks at Manga Bay. But guys, before I even waste my time doing this, since I understand there is only one story on planet Earth and uh, all of my legions of fans wanting to hear my comment on the uh, biggest story on the planet, the single biggest distraction of the distract of the single biggest distraction in history. Obviously, guys, I, I mean, all joking aside, uh, <clears throat> I do hope you're going to join me and even Sancho Panza for wishing our First Lady, Melania Trump, a speedy recovery from the corona panic. Uh, Melania, our hearts are with you and we wish you a speedy recovery and maybe you'll move back to Russia where you came from as soon as you get well. But uh, that's all we need to say about that subject. And uh, so now that we're done with the distraction to the distraction to the distraction to the distraction, let's just go over here and talk about, you know, those things that uh, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com like to talk about, which the number one thing that they like to talk about. <clears throat> As the Amazon burns, what happens to its biodiversity? <laughs> you know, I, I love it when they ask a question in a headline. What happens to biodiversity when the most biodiverse plant, uh, spot on the planet goes down in flames? Can you say tipping point? More than 40% of fires in the Brazilian Amazon this year are burning in standing forest. Okay, so I just, in case you don't know what that means is, there has been, I don't know whether it's been a myth or not, but up until this year, the vast, vast majority of forest fires <clears throat> are in forest that were bulldozed and chainsawed last year. Uh, but this year, we have seen something different that more than 40% getting on towards one half of the fires in, in, the, in the Brazilian Amazon this year are, torch, are torching uh, standing rainforest. This has never happened before. Uh, that standing rain forest is in flames, just so you understand what they're talking about here. All right, more than 40% of fires in the Brazilian Amazon this year are burning in standing forests with more than 4.6 million acres already impacted this year alone. Yes, <clears throat> such forest fires have major repercussions for flora and fauna. Rainforest trees, the, the, the very term rainforest, uh, we're going to have to think of another name, kind of like permafrost. Rainforest trees are especially vulnerable 
because fire is relatively new to the Amazon rainforest, so the trees there have not developed fire resistance. <clears throat> A rainforest fire burning through, you know, standing rainforest for the first time kills most small trees and seedlings and can kill 50% of the large trees. Multiple fires over time continue reducing biodiversity. Some scientists fear that a combination of fires, increasing drought due to climate change, and deforestation could lead to a tipping point with devastating impacts for the Amazon, which harbors 10% of the world's biodiversity. Now, of course, some scientists, including some I have interviewed here on Collapse Chronicles, back when I did interviews on Collapse Chronicles, say that the Amazon rainforest has already reached a tipping point and uh, you can kiss goodbye at the Amazon rainforest which is quickly turning into the Amazon desert but anyway okay long as we're down there in the Amazon let's go look at good old black rock <clears throat> black rocks 400 million dollar stake in Amazon meat packers defies its sustainability uh, credentials. Oh yes, do you think so? BlackRock, the world's biggest asset manager, has 400 eight million dollars via various funds in Brazil's top three meat packers in the Amazon. These holdings are at odds with BlackRock's stated position of pursuing environmentally sustainable investments. Huh, given that the meat packers are closely associated with deforestation in the Amazon. Wow, imagine that. Defying Black Rock's sustainability credentials. Uh huh. All right, okay. Do we, we have another question being asked at Manga Bay today. Take a wild guess. This is a yes or no question. <clears throat> Does mining fit into a clean energy future? Should be, does filthy, dirty, planet-eating mining fit into a BS clean energy future? The answer to the question is, well, it's yes and no. Uh, if you believe for one minute in the myth of clean energy, well, obviously mining has to fit into it. There will be no uh, clean energy without dirty, filthy mining. The you know the, the very notion of uh, of any of this crap, clean energy, green energy, uh, renewable energy pick your greenwashing word, uh, is a sick, twisted joke. All right. Combating climate change will require rapidly deploying renewable energy while reducing our use of fossil fuels. But renewable energy technologies such as wind turbines, solar panels, batteries, and electric vehicles require huge amounts of mined metals and minerals. That poses a problem. That poses a problem because the mining process creates significant environmental impacts from air and water pollution. 
to deforestation and has led to numerous conflicts with local communities. And now there is a concerted effort underway by the mining industry to open up vast areas of the, o of the ocean floor to minerals mining. If we are not careful about how we meet our growing demand for minerals, it could actually imperil the promise of the transition to clean energy. Hmm, do you think so? Little dog, I'm sorry, I can't, uh, I can't do this and do this at the same time. You will have to find another place to uh, settle into this rant. All right. Uh, I, I, okay guys, uh, due to the distraction from the distraction from the distraction, I am not going to do any news of the C word uh, this week. Uh, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not going there. Uh, I'm going to shut up right now and we're going to move forward. All right. <clears throat> New study finds a Mexico sized swath of intact land lost to human pressure, uh, in, in one 13 year period. <clears throat> A new study has found that human activities contributed to the loss of 1.9 million square kilometers, otherwise known as 734,000 square miles of now formerly intact land between 2000 and 2013 and that more than half of the world is under moderate or intense pressure from humanity. Yes, I, I guess that 100% is more than half. Anyway, the most substantial losses, you know, to our planet, thanks to humans, occurred in tropical and subtropical grassland, savanna, and shrublands, while the most intact regions uh, were tundra, boreal, and taiga forest, and deserts. Yes. Uh. I don't know why the most recent research is seven years ago. Okay. <clears throat> Oops, we have a C word connection, so I have to move on from that story. All right, good for Vietnam. <clears throat> Vietnam creates new nature reserve. Yes. Conservationists have hailed the establishment of the new Dong Chao Ke Nguoc Trung Nature Reserve as a major step, a major step for the protection of Vietnam's wildlife. I did not realize there was any wildlife in Vietnam left to protect. And of course, guys, uh, do not forget critical threats such as poaching and deforestation remain, huh? However, and conservationists say enforcement of new protective measures will be key to the reserve success. And this guy is, of course, if you don't realize what this is, uh, you, you know, this is one more example of greenwashing over there in, in Vietnam, <clears throat> where like everywhere else on the planet, <coughs> probably some guys from the Vietnamese Chamber of Commerce went and drew a little green line around a piece of ground 
and then they colored it probably this shade of light green. <clears throat> so uh, these clueless morons can actually believe that anything is being done to protect Vietnam's wildlife by drawing a little circle around a piece of land. Now, I'm not saying uh, <clears throat> that little green line is, is, is you know, I, I mean, you can't argue with it. Good for them for drawing their little green line. It, it, you know, it can't hurt. But uh, that this whole notion of protected areas, uh, I mean, it, it's become absolutely absurd. I mean, the, 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 this whole notion of saving uh, half of this planet by drawing little green lines around half the planet. I, I, anyway, guys, <clears throat> moving on to anyone who doesn't get this yet. Uh, <clears throat> guys, I'm, uh, I'm only going to touch on about a third of these stories. I can't even tell if this damn camera is still filming. This new camera I got doesn't have a little red light out front. Alright, here we go. This, uh, right in line, uh, in line with drawing little green lines uh, uh, around pieces of paper and Black Rock's uh, commitment to sustainability. We have this absolute uh, tw ironic, twisted uh, humor. If you do not have a black, twisted, ironic sense of humor, you're, you're, you're lost. Anyway, <clears throat> world leaders endorse Pledge for Nature to address our planetary emergency. Yes, in the midst of a planetary emergency. 71 world leaders have endorsed a new 10-point pledge to accelerate action to reverse nature loss by 2030 and tackle global warming. And, and, and of course, guys, as we were reporting last week, you know, they, they did this 10 years ago. They made this pledge for nature where uh, they, they did, I think it was a 20-point one 10 years ago. It's only 10 points now, I noticed. And you can imagine how many of their goals, their pledge for nature that they set for 2010 to 2020 were met. Obviously, it is zero, and that is exactly how many of these will be met this year. Uh, all right, Justin Trudeau. Uh, you know, can you say oil sands development? Justin Oil Sands Trudeau. I have no idea who Jacinda Ardern is. Emmanuel Macaroni. Angela Merkel, Prince Charles, and Boris Johnson are among those who signed the Leader's Pledge for Nature, stating that the world is in a state of planetary emergency. I actually have to uh, tip my hat to uh, that guy over there at The Guardian, George Monbio or however you pronounce that guy's name. Uh, I, I have a lot of problems with George. Uh, he is an overpopulation denier, but even a, someone as clueless as George Monbio, I might read his essay at some point, you know, talking about this. Uh, it, it, it is an absolutely... George, correctly, uh, the thesis of his uh, essay in The Guardian was that the, these pledges for nature, not only do they not help, 
but they actually harm the planet because it gives these clueless morons uh, actually believing one word of this crap, this bullshit uh, coming out of, of the mouths of these uh, of these planet eaters, that something is being done, that anything is being done to uh, to respond to the planetary emergency. And so people reading this will, will walk away saying, all right, the world leaders are going to take care of this <coughs> so we don't have to do anything. We can go right ahead breeding because the world leaders like Justin Trudeau uh, are, are going to save the planet for our little bundles of joy. Yes. Anyway. Moving along from that knee slapper, a uh, few more. Uh, okay, guys, and, 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 and here's this other one uh, about the myth of the noble savage that I uh, used to suffer from. This is a commentary from, uh, don't even know who the author is. David Wilkie, Susan Lieberman, and James Watson protect indigenous people's rights to avoid a sixth extinction. Yes, quoting from, uh, this is quoting from this commentary, but most of humanity have been grossly negligent in our use of the earth. Wise stewardship of natural resources by indigenous peoples within their traditional territories has had a profoundly positive impact on the conservation of plant and animal species on land and in rivers, lakes, and coastal waters. Um, Anyway, it goes on. Now, now, guys, once again, this is kind of like protected areas. I have no doubt that indigenous people compared to... The, the very term indigenous people means nothing outside of, uh, outside of uh, subtro uh, tropical Africa is the only place that people are indigenous to. Uh, but you know what we're talking about, but, uh, you know, this is the myth of the noble savage in comparison to the invaders, you know, uh, they, they have, but, uh, you know, I, I spent several months down in, um, down in this indigenous reserve in the Peruvian Amazon. It was uh, 10 years ago I was down there seeing what the uh, indigenous people uh, taking care of their indigenous reserve in the Peruvian Amazon looked like. Anyway, I, uh, I, I better move on. Yes, okay. Spots of hope. Some good news for cheetahs. Moving along. I read this in the mainstream media about a shark fin trafficking ring busted in Florida. Right here in Florida, I mean, it's like, what? It's not like you have to go out into the middle of nowhere to find shark fin trafficking rings. Take a wild guess where the shark fins were headed from Florida sharks having their fins cut off to the vanishing trails of Sri Lanka's sloth bears. You will not believe this, but in Sri Lanka, the sloth bear is on the decline 
its population dropping drastically over the years, there are now fewer than 1,000 sloth bears left in Sri Lanka. I am amazed that there is a single sloth bear remaining in uh, Sri Lanka. You can kiss that one goodbye. Uh, guys, I I anyway, one more, one more. Uh, you will not believe that IKEA faces complaint over wood believed to have been illegally logged. <coughs> a Swiss foundation has filed a complaint against furniture giant IKEA for failing to declare the origin of the wood used in two of its best-selling chairs. Yes, the complaint uh, claims that IKEA's timber suppliers in Romania and Ukraine were engaged in illegal logging. That we all need our favorite chairs. I wonder where the wood in this chair I'm sitting in came from. Anyway, guys, since I realize I'm talking to myself and everyone is going to be glued to their TVs for the next 14 days, I might as well just uh, quarantine myself from having a making another video for the next 14 days. But uh, while the rest of the planet uh, remains glued to their TV sets. One more time, let's all wish our First Lady Melania Trump a speedy recovery from the Corona panic. And with that, the little dog and I, we're going to head out on this beautiful day and finish planting our organic field peas here at Bugs in a Jar Farm getting ready for the winter of 2020. But of course, we will be spending that in Florida. Bye, guys.